I'm going to do a little bit of painting with Photoshop. I like to use this round, hard brush, and I like it to trail with pen pressure. So I'm going to pick a color, red, and we'll lay some red down. And I can trail off a bit with pressure if I want to. I'm going to lay some yellow down. And when I cross, I can kind of fade away with pressure there. Now that's not a great mix, but there are some nice oranges in the mix, and I can pick those and lay those back down and blend like this and cross this way, lay some reds this way, lay some oranges this way, some more in this direction, and really sort of try to give it a light touch. And if I can't give it a light enough touch, then I can turn the whole thing down with opacity here. And that gives me more of an ability to kind of creep up on the colors like this. And that is how I like to blend colors in Photoshop. Uh, it's nice because it puts a little bit of texture in the blend and it doesn't, you know, it's not overly smooth. If, however, you're looking for something overly smooth, here's an idea, or, or smooth, not necessarily overly smooth, but for your purposes, maybe you need it smooth. Um, make a copy. I do this sometimes. Make a copy. Filter. Blur. Gaussian blur. And you can blur quite a bit if you want. And then I ask for a layer mask. Say Control I. Turn that black. And now I paint white into the layer mask. And it's as if I'm using a um, like a just add water blend in um, let me turn this opacity back up uh, just like in, in painter it has that same feeling to it especially if you don't touch the edges or you just paint where you want to paint it doesn't read like a like an overall blur even though that's how you made it it reads like you know these things are being blended together so that's another way to kind of add some additional color like that uh, one last thing in this while we're here, um, you don't have to settle for the orange that's produced when the colors cross over. Um, maybe you want something uh, brighter. And there's no reason not to introduce your own uh, colors into the mix. You don't have to make Photoshop do all the work. You can, you know, paint and pick your colors and figure out what you want or do it that way. Now, let's say that you are working with um, a brush that doesn't have pressure uh, fades set to the pen pressure like that. Um, so now maybe you've got a, uh, a grad that goes from blue. Do it over here. Blue. And I'll paint it long. And I'll come back and I'll say, let's say that there's a yellow over here. This is opaque. Maybe I'll make the brush smaller. And maybe there's some green in the middle of the mix you've decided. So if you work with a small enough brush, I'm using the bracket to make the brush smaller. If you work with a small enough brush, you can kind of create a mechanical blend, sort of the way a cross-hatching works, and, um, you know, create the impression that the colors are, are blending that way. It's better to make a very a brush that's specially suited for this, but I'm just kind of getting an, an example across right now. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because um, there's a lot of people who like to use the smudge brush. I don't actually do this that much, but um, people take the smudge brush and um, the first thing that you might think is that they would just kind of drag it around like this. But that's uh, kind of muddy and not that great. I think from what I understand, the secret to using the smudge brush really effectively is to say F5, other dynamics, scattering. Here we go. Scattering. Turn the scattering up. Uh, there's scattering turned up. And shape dynamics size jitter, I guess we don't need that. Um, now that the scattering is uh, applied to the smudge brush, you can see you can go in there and it's almost like a 
a power smudger and uh, you can go in there and smudge it much more effectively um, if that green is too muddy you don't again have to accept it you can put whatever green you want in there go with a a lighter green different hue maybe even that I don't know I'm just kind of working quickly but um, again when the smudge has that sort of power scatter setting going on um, you can really push these colors around and a lot of people like to blend their colors that way finally let's see file new 256, 256, white, new image. Um, if you make an image and you um, make it smaller, I'm not going to worry too much about how well I do this. Okay, there we go. Can throw a few smaller ones in there. Probably over art directing this for such a quick demo. But um, let's see. Edit. Define brush preset. Sampled brush. Okay, we'll take it. And um, we go back to the original image. And let's see. Brush tip shapes. Spacing. Turn it up. And. Um, shape dynamics, size, angle, roundness. Um, I'm going to go with this for now. And we'll go with red again. This is sort of what I meant by making specialized brushes that are meant for doing crosshatch kind of mechanical style work. Um, although here again, I, I, I should have spaced these dots further because they're really overlapping quite a bit and it's not really creating a crosshatch effect. But here again, um, you're still better off, in my opinion, if you go to um, press other dynamics and you turn on uh, opacity with pen pressure. And um, so anytime a conversation comes up, when people ask, uh, is a tablet worth it, or should I get a, um, a a tablet, or am I okay with my mouse? I always think, yeah, you should definitely have a tablet if you want to paint, because I can't imagine doing um, anything even remotely close to this with a with a mouse. Um, and again, if you don't kill all the texture that that emerges from the blends, it gives it a kind of a nice painterly quality, I think, which is adds to the to the work